Now let's get into SQLI Labs. To reiterate, these labs were made by security researcher Audi One a while back, but they're still one of the best labs involving SQL injection that I've ever seen. If you didn't set this up yet, please go back and check my setup videos. So open up Firefox and go to localhost and the name of the folder that you unzipped from the previous setup video. And let's start with the basic challenges. So we'll click that and we will start with lesson one. Let's just familiarize ourselves with these labs. So all of the demonstrations in this particular lecture are going to be error based. What does that mean? It means whatever we do, we're going to see an error printed to the web page. And that's going to give us clues as to what we can do to exploit the SQL vulnerability. So we see a simple page here saying, please input the ID as parameter with numeric value. So parameters are going to be preceded by a question mark. Why? Because a question mark indicates a query string. In this, we will be querying for the ID parameter with a numeric value of one. So question mark ID equals one. So the response we have here is a successful MySQL query. That's what it looks like on the front end. So let's take a look at what it looks like on the back end. As you recall, we have set up logging and here is the mysql.log. I'm going to go to that directory and tail mysql.log as we saw before we can see the actual query that's happening on mysql as a result of what we do on the web front end let's see what happens when we insert a single quote after the one As you see here, we get a MySQL error. Please note that the error itself is enclosed in single quotes. So that doesn't represent the actual number of single quotes that were used in the query. In case that's a bit confusing, we can clear that up by looking at the actual MySQL query again. Here we go. That's what the actual query looks like. And as we see, instead of two single quotes, we have three single quotes. So obviously that's going to result in an incorrect syntax, which is why we saw the error output to the web page. So why is this important? because we need to know what characters to inject to manipulate the SQL query on the back end. So how do we fix this query? Let's go back to the front end. So we have question mark ID equals one single quote. I'm going to add or one equals one hyphen hyphen plus sign. What does this do? It adds in a query or one equals one, which as we learned before is always true by way of Boolean logic. And the hyphen hyphen plus comments out the single quote, which broke the query. Let's run that and see if it works. Good. This is the result of a successful query. Let's take a look at the MySQL query in the back end. All right, this is exactly what we wanted. We have ID equals one enclosed in single quotes or one equals one. That's the end of the query because 
we are commenting out the other single quote. So the only thing that happens is the same thing as ID equals one, but the point is to show that we can reliably control the MySQL queries. Now that we know we can control the MySQL queries reliably, let's go ahead and manually figure out how many columns there are in the database. We can do this by using order by, starting with one and incrementing it by one until we reach an error. The error signifies that you've exceeded the number of columns in this database, indicating that the previous number is the maximum number of columns which exist in the database. So let's replace the or one equals one with order by one. And as I said before, let's increment it until we reach an error. So two, three, four. Unknown column four in order clause. Based on this output, we now know that there's only three columns in this database. Now we can use the union select function to concatenate the number of columns into new rows. All right, so I'm going to change order by four to union select one, two, three. We're not seeing the results as expected. We're supposed to see the column numbers in the output, not the username and password. Why is this? Because the MySQL query is showing results from ID equals one, and we're only seeing a portion of the output on the web page due to lack of full visibility. Let's go to MySQL to demonstrate what we want to see. MySQL hyphen u username hyphen p your password use MySQL use security that's the name of this database okay so I'm going to run the MySQL query that is actually occurring in the back end you can take a look at that real quick. Okay, so using tail doesn't show at all. Let me just uh, cat. Here we go. Select all from users where ID equals one, union select, one, two, three, and the comment, I'm not going to use that whole thing because all we need is a portion of that. Select all from users where ID equals single quote, one single quote, union select, one comma two comma three, and with a semicolon. Here is the first part that we see in the web page, dumb dumb as username and password, and here is the union select of the columns one, two, and three. We don't see this part on the web page, we only see the first part. So how do we see the second part on the web page? Well, we need to invalidate the first part of the query while keeping the second part of the query intact. So instead of ID equals one, which we know is a valid value for the ID parameter, let's try putting in 9999999. Okay, so ID equals this value does not exist so therefore we're not getting dumb dumb back 
as we were previously. Now we're only getting the output from 2 and 3. The 1 isn't visible, but now we're seeing the view from the union select, just the 2 and the 3 in the login and password section here in the web page. The ID column is not being output on the web page. This is by design. So let's use our newly discovered control over the union operator to do some basic database enumeration. As we see, we get output from column 2 and 3. So this is where we can inject commands. I'm going to check for the database version and the current database. So we're going to use union select one comma version bracket bracket replace the three with database bracket bracket and leave the comment there. Very good. So we've been able to execute a MySQL command version and database to show us the version here and the database name security. Now let's modify this to see the current user in the database directory. So user bracket bracket at at data dir Good. So the currently logged on user is Jesse, and the current directory of the database is var lib mysql. So far so good, we're able to gain unauthorized access to database information. Now let's enumerate the tables in our database. First, let's briefly cover information schema. This provides access to database metadata and information about the MySQL server, such as database names, tables, etc. I'm going to develop a query that will output all unique tables that do not match the tables MySQL and information underscore schema within the table schema. We're doing this because those specific tables are not going to be useful during this enumeration. To reiterate, this rather lengthy MySQL query will concatenate unique values of table schema, separating results with a comma and space from information underscore schema dot tables, where the table underscore schema does not equal MySQL and information schema. As before, we're invalidating the initial value of the ID parameter. So let's go ahead and see the results. We inject that. All right, so we are left with three table names, security being the table of interest. We already know this, so we won't bother with the other two tables. This MySQL query will show unique column names from information underscore schema dot columns where the table underscore schema is equal to security. Let's extract the usernames and passwords after we know the naming convention. Let's replace the previous SQL injection. There we go. We have the unique column names as described earlier. So now we can build another query to extract the usernames and passwords.
This MySQL query will show all usernames and passwords, separated by a comma and space, from the user table. Let's run that. Good. We have usernames and a corresponding password for each of the users in the users table. That's all for this lecture, and we'll be going over Boolean-based and time-based blind SQL injection in the next one.